guess it doesn't matter We've had our thick and thin Enough to know that I would rather not go through Life without you Chico and Poppy show with Poppy here today or tonight we are going to make chicken carbonara and I'll tell you there's a million different ways that you can make this um, a lot of people make it uh, very light they'll use uh, like a little bit of an egg wash on there and, and uh, do a very light thing with some pancetta and uh, peas I do mine more like an Alfredo, and it's the way my family likes it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I think you're going to like my recipe here. And the first thing that we need to do, you see me stirring here, is because I've already started a roux. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the same method that I do every time I make like a homemade mac and cheese. Except with the cheese, we're going to be using Parmesan cheese. When I usually make a mac and cheese, I use like an extra sharp. And the same method as doing the mac and cheese, because we're going to be making an Alfredo sauce, which is a cheese sauce. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a roux. And some of you know what that is, but I'm going to talk to the ones that don't. What this is, it's a thickening agent. Same thing as like a slurry that I've talked about before. And what I do is here, this is on a, a medium to low heat, and I put in here uh, four tablespoons of flour to five tablespoons of butter. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be stirring this and you're going to get yourself a consistency that's about the same as like applesauce. And I'll show you here, you can get a little, little look in there and how that looks. And it's a... The method is you just got to keep stirring, 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 stirring. Now, I found that with, with the roux like this, that you could get this roux quite quickly and uh, add your milk to it and move right along. But if you want a better flavor, like what I've been doing here, I've been stirring this roux now for about a half an hour. And if you have the time, it makes a difference. If you can get your roux like to a golden brown like that, you will get a better flavor to the to the to the cheese sauce that you're going to be making. Okay, now this is a recipe that is a typical Italian recipe where I don't know all the amounts. It's all a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and it's the way I've done it forever. So tonight we're going to be uh, trying to get exact measurements for you, or at least um, get as close as I can so that you guys have a little bit of idea where to go. So I've told you we've used five tablespoons of butter to four tablespoons of flour. This roux is ready and now we need to add milk. Okay, so I'm going to be measuring this instead of just pouring it in like I've always done. And we're going to start here with one cup. All right, we're going to two cups. Yeah, it looks like we're going to go three cups. Actually, let's go four. Okay. So we've got four cups of milk to our roux. I've already uh, measured out the cheese. This is a regular 100% Parmesan cheese. I have two cups. So we got four cups of the milk and we're gonna go two cups of the cheese. That sounds perfect. Now I love the Parmesan cheese. Make sure it's 100%, just like I've told you before. Uh, the quality of your ingredients make a big difference with Italian cooking. There's not always a lot of ingredients to Italian cooking, but they need to be fresh and good ingredients. You can get it mixed here with the Parmesan. All right, so I, now I'm gonna take this from a low and I'm gonna bring it to about a medium because what we wanna do now is our roux has gotten into the uh, milk and we want it to start to thicken. And what you're gonna find now is when this starts to thicken, is where you, and then we add our cheese, we're gonna see how the consistency looks. And that's where I can't help you because when we get to that stage, it's either gonna be not thick enough or it's gonna be too thick. And it shouldn't be not thick enough because we're gonna, we're gonna be doing this gradually. 
and uh, I'd rather have it a little bit too thick to start because we can always add a little milk to it. I prefer not to make a slurry now to thicken this because I've already made a beautiful roux with all that flavor. So I'd rather it be a little bit thick right now where we could add a little milk to it than go the other way around where I have to bypass that uh, roux that I did and, and try to add a slurry to it to thicken it. Okay, so we're gonna get this where it starts to thicken up a little bit. This takes a little bit of time. Now in this recipe, we're going to be using bacon. I have a pound of bacon. Now you can use pancetta. I, I prefer pancetta, which is a, uh, an Ita like an Italian bacon. Um, but it has a little bit of a different flavor. And my family, you know, they're better with the bacon. So I, I stick with the bacon because uh, it's flavors that they like. Same thing with you. If, if you want to do this completely authentic, you would use the pancetta. And it's going to have the same kind of fat in it. And um, it, it's, it's almost the same kind of flavor, but it's I think it's like a little gamier. So a lot of times the kids will be off put by it a little bit, but bacon, I mean, everybody, everybody likes bacon, right? All right, so this is starting to thicken a little bit. So I'm gonna start adding my Parmesan cheese. And do a little bit here at a time. We're gonna thicken this up. And like I said, this is the same way that I make uh, mac and cheese. Yeah, the best mac and cheese recipes that I have, I use a nice extra sharp cheese. Instead of using, you know, Velveeta or a cheddar or something like that. Try it sometime. Do an extra sharp cheese. Get that bite to it. And uh, it's the same method. You would do a roux, you would add your milk, and then you would uh, grate your extra sharp cheese and you would add that to this. And then you would make your noodles and you'd mix it all together and bake it. Okay, so this goes off to the side now. We're gonna put this on low very low. I'm going to bring over our frying pan and we're going to get started. Okay. Now what we have here is I have a pound of bacon cut up diced. You see it there? And this is what we're going to cook first. We're going to cook this bacon until it's crispy and then we're going to uh, put it into our cheese sauce and then we're going to start cooking our other ingredients. Okay, so we're going to add our bacon. Any kind of bacon will work good. Uh, you just want a full pound. Make sure you check the package. A lot of times they trick you and they only have 12 ounces in the package and not the full 16. Make sure you watch that. And any kind of bacon will work. Okay, so this bacon is starting to fry up nice. Chicken-wise, with this in this recipe, I have about four chicken breasts that I cut up. Um, about medium in size, not too big. And I diced that chicken up. And I didn't dice it super small. I want, I want the chicken pieces to have a little bite to them, so don't do them super, super small. When this bacon is done, we're going to go straight to the chicken, okay? So, my point is, is don't rush this, okay? This, it, the, the recipe is, is not that hard, but you can't rush it. If you go too fast with that roux, you're not going to get a real nice cheese sauce, okay? If you if you go too fast with the chicken or like with the bacon here, then you won't have nice crispy pieces. If you go too fast with the chicken, then you'll get that boiled flavor instead of a nice browning on there like that. So, you know, it's an easy, fairly easy recipe. Just don't rush it, okay? Give it the love and the time that it deserves, all right? Now this is starting to brown up good. You can see the fat starts to change the color. It starts to get a more bubbly when the, when the bacon's almost done. 
going to let this brown up real good. And then we're going to try to get it all into our sauce. Matter of fact, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to move my cheese sauce over here. Okay. This bacon is just about perfect. Gets harder to see the bacon when it gets done like this because your grease starts to bubble up a lot. Okay. Now can you see that bacon? How nice that looks now? See how crispy it is? And that's what we're gonna do. I have a slotted spoon and we're gonna try to get it without all the grease, okay? Of course, you're going to get some in there, that's fine. But we want to kind of keep the rest of that grease here in the pan. Now we see we got our bacon in there. We're going to stir that right in. That's our first layer to our sauce. Okay? You got that in there? Now what I'm going to do here with this bacon grease is I am going to take some of this bacon grease out. I want to cook with this grease, but I don't want it that much. So I'm going to take about half of that grease out. Okay? And we're going to add a little bit of olive oil to it so that that bacon grease doesn't overpower us. Okay, now we're going to start with our chicken. This looks like I'm going to be able to put it all in. with a little bit of fresh pepper. With a different spoon or fork, you gotta make sure that we don't cross contaminate. We wanna make sure we're constantly stirring our cheese sauce. You want to get this chicken browned up nice, nice color to it. What I like to do too is when this is all done, I like to keep everything cooking on a very low temperature, that cheese sauce, and it'll make your chicken very, very tender. You don't have to do that. You could cook this chicken completely now, put it in there and serve it right away. But I prefer to uh, slow cook it a little bit in that cheese sauce just so that this chicken gets a little bit more tender. with this chicken is to get a nice little brown to the color of the chicken. We don't want to overcook this and dry it all out, but we want to get a little bit of color to the chicken. Okay, this chicken has a nice color to it, so we're going to add this chicken now to our cheese sauce. Layers and layers of flavor. You see a theme here with Italian cooking, right? Layers. Layers of flavor. When you combine all of them, each one with their own flavors, and then you combine them all, you have just a wonderful set of flavors. 
Okay, we'll put this back over on the side on low. We're going to add a little olive oil. And now comes our mushrooms. Same thing I've told you about these mushrooms before. You want to have a little, little thickness to them. You don't want them paper thin. I've told you in other episodes about washing these, how you don't want to put them in the water. You want to wipe them, wipe the dirt off of them. You want to add just a little bit of salt and the pepper because it will help break down the mushroom. Speeds it up a little bit. Okay. And we're going to brown this up a little bit. We don't want to cook these to death. Just like other recipes, we're going to cook. I cook the pasta ahead of time. This is what I always do. You see here, I cook the pasta ahead of time. And then I keep the water here uh, on a low. And when it's time to, to eat, we're going to bring this pasta back to life. That way when you, you have guests over, you're not out in the kitchen doing a whole, uh, a whole pound of pasta and trying to cook it all. You already have it done. The messy part is already done and you're just going to bring it back to life real quick. Cooking these little ways like the restaurant ways really um, is good, especially when you're entertaining. That way, when the people are over, you're not like slaving in the kitchen. You have, I could, you can have all your cheese sauce like this already done before anybody comes. You can have your pasta already done before somebody comes. So then, you just, when people start to get hungry, you come out into the kitchen, you warm up, you bring your pasta back to life, and your cheese sauce is already done, you see? That way, you can entertain, but still socialize and be part of the part of the party without slaving in the kitchen. Alright, like I said, we don't want to overcook these mushrooms. We just want to get a little bit of color to them. These look just about ready. Okay, let's bring this back over. Shut off our heat. These look pretty good. Yep. And we're going to put them right in the pan with the rest of our ingredients. Okay. Now this recipe calls for peas. Um, I use regular frozen peas. They work just fine. We're going to cook them off and then we're going to fix each person's plate individually. We're going to uh, reheat our pasta and then we're going to get a bowl and we're going to put the pasta in the bowl, a little bit of our cheese and chicken mixture, and then we're going to add a little bit of the cooked uh, peas and we're going to fix each plate individually just like you would in a restaurant. Okay, you can see everything here is mixed in. You see that, how beautiful that looks? And we're going to put this on a very, very low heat with a cover for at least a half an hour. 20 minutes later. Okay, so our cheese sauce has been cooking about a half an hour or so. So this is all ready. I've warmed up the pasta like I told you. Chico's here. You always can tell when the meal is ready. Because all of a sudden you just show up. Doesn't it look good? That's got chicken, bacon, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to fix the plate to show everybody how it looks. So the pasta now, I've already brought it back to life. I put it in the water for a couple seconds. And we're going to do it the way you would do it in a restaurant, okay? We're going to get our pasta, put that here in a bowl, and then we're going to put some of our cheese and chicken mixture on here. And then you're going to feed it to me. Like that. We're going to mix that up. We're going to add a little bit of the peas. Look at the color, how nice that looks. See that? that all up. Good about doing it this way is that everybody can get exactly the way they want it. And then we're going to just put this in the bowl. Okay. There it is 
those folks. See that? Does that look nice? Are we using this one? Sure. The one that was yeah. back there? I'm gonna try it. Huh? Mushroom? Good stuff? What? Good stuff? Oh yeah. Alrighty then. So there you have a chicken carbonara with mushrooms and peas. Remember what Grandma Jen used to always say? Enjoy your life and your food every day. Alright. Ciao.